What's up guys, what's growing on? So coming at you here from North Florida this weekend, I'm in Pensacola, I'm in that historic district, and I was brought in on this project a little over a year ago, and you can see the sign here behind me, I'm at a new construction site here, where they're building, I believe it's called Smart Home Pensacola. So there's a couple of videos on YouTube, I believe they even have their own website, and they're building a really cool, very innovative type of uh, new home here. And I want to tell you all what we're doing, tell you all what they're doing, and take you in and show you around. So hold tight. I guess I should give a, um, a first shout out to the builder Dave here for the, um, really just all the smart technology that's being used here on this project. And I'll start trying to list off some of those different aspects and hopefully I don't forget any for you all. But um, you know, this house is 100% net zero. It's going to be getting a solar roof. Um, 40,000 gallon cisterns, geothermal cooling and heating. Um, it's the first home of its type here in the state of Florida where the water from the sinks and the showers will get, get caught in the gray water system in the lower you know, compartment of the house. I won't call it the basement, but can't really, maybe the downstairs, the garage area, and that water will be used to flush the toilets. Um, you know, so there's really all kinds of awesome stuff going on here. I believe there's five wells that were put in the backyard for that geothermal loop, you know, that will be used for that heating and cooling. So, I mean, this is a one of a kind, first of a kind house to be built here in the state of Florida. And I guess I should just feel really fortunate to even have been brought in on this project. This is kind of new, exciting, first of its type, and something that I forgot to mention, and this is probably one of the coolest aspects. So right here, off the back where you see kind of that brush and then the brush again, there's gonna be a natural swimming pool right there. So there's gonna be about eight to 10 foot of deck. Underneath that deck will be all the filtration system for the swimming pool. There'll be a natural swimming pool with an infinity edge actually kind of dumping off the back over there. Just to the right of that, we're gonna have some terraces stopping down, stepping down, you know, kind of just gradually down that hill. That'll be some gardening space, decent light over there. This is all getting filled with fill dirt. So there's about 500 yards, 600 yards of fill dirt going in here. Unfortunately, a little bit of grass, but a lot of vegetation up top also. And then over here on this side, they're gonna get one of those Gothic greenhouses, one of those glass greenhouses right here on the corner. Underneath of this right here, there's a tunnel that actually goes into the garage. And that tunnel allows access for the homeowner to go inside get to her potting table downstairs, bring it back around outside the greenhouse, then bring it right on over to the, the gardens. So a lot of uh, smart building technology here, like I said, lots of edible aspects. And you know, the, they had originally reached out to me kind of looking for permaculture and uh, wanting a little bit of more of that permaculture hybrid. Obviously, you know, we're right on the water out here, um, you know, nicer, higher end community. So you know, that full on food forest isn't gonna work, but we are gonna have some other you know, interesting elements going on. I mean, we have lots of microclimate and shade to work with, you know, just over here on the side of the property. So, I mean, she wants to do mushroom logs, you know, obviously lots of culinary gingers, um, medicinals, herbs. So, you know, it really goes on and on out here. All the, really the cool things I'm, I'm gonna be able to experiment and play with like some of the things we're gonna be doing here I've never done before nobody's ever done before it's gonna be very experimental um, we might have some failures you know I don't know so we're, we're expecting to actually start this install somewhere around the end of February um, hopefully have it ra wrapped up by April so you know I'm seeing you know, two or three weeks maybe around the house to get all this landscaped in they still have a guest house to finish over there on the front of the property. We'll be coming back for a second and a third phase on this project, so it's not gonna be a, a just quick in and out, but I'm really looking forward just to the, you know, to watch the property evolve, to watch everything work the way it was supposed to. Um, you know, that's what kind of excites me to actually see these things come together, so I can't wait to come back. This is my second time here, and I just wanted to show you all what I'm a part of. This is pretty cool, so I've got some other neat sites to hit while I'm up here in the Pensacola, you know, area. I'm going to some food forests and this and that, so I think y'all are going to enjoy. I'm going to take you down back and just show you the view in, maybe one or two more angles from the sides of the house. So another interesting design element that I forgot to point out, there used to be a house right here where I'm standing a pretty good size house. I believe it was probably built in the early 1900s. All the wood, all the windows, all the brick from that house had been salvaged. So they're reusing some of that stuff in the building process here. They're reusing some of that stuff in the building process somewhere else. 
and some of it's still over here in the shipping container. Um, but you see all this brick here behind me? That would be the main hardscape element around this property for driveways, for, um, you know, pathways, for decks. So that's all old Chicago brick. You know, this is recycled materials. This isn't, uh, you know, new purchased brick. This is something that had been probably driven over for years. Um, you know, they don't make brick like this anymore. And, you know, something that I could tell you is I've done a lot of hardscapes and I've worked with other companies and, you know, new brick, I want to say is like, you know, two, 300 bucks a pallet or was maybe five years ago. Um, you know, old brick, like that Chicago brick, I want to say is like six, 800 bucks a pallet. So there's a, there's a huge difference in cost there. I mean, you know, you definitely, they want more money for the old brick because they know, you know, they're not making it like that anymore. There, there is no comparison. And I'm underneath the house right now and I just wanted to show y'all First of all, look up at the ceiling. Do you see this? That's foam with steel with concrete. The builder actually showed me the whole design as they were pouring this floor. I'm telling you, some like crazy state-of-the-art technology here. So it's, uh, it's really pretty cool. And what I wanted to point out under here was the brick does not end. Um, you know, they have brick for days here. Um, there was also another pile up by the entrance. So I don't know if they're gonna have quite enough to do what they wanna do but they should be pretty dang close. And another thing I'll point out real quick while I'm underneath here, I mentioned Tesla roof, Tesla charging stations, 100 kilowatt charging stations, so he can charge their Teslas very quickly. He's been driving a Tesla for years, you know, definitely believes in the technology. The wife is gonna have the Model 3 here very soon, so they'll have two of them. They both pull in, hit their charging stations, electric golf cart over there, net zero. I mean, really, this is the future, y'all. I, uh, I hope we see more and more building like this going on. Um, you know, this kind of stuff just makes sense to me. And like I said, I'm, I'm just really excited to be a part of something like this. This is cool, so right, good stuff. See this giant corridor like pool behind me? This is me getting some French drains. So once they fill it with dirt, that water actually comes out of there well. Um, but it's also gonna get a couple of huge cisterns. There's gonna be a 20,000 gallon cistern and another 20,000 gallon cistern and also another well installed. So if they're not getting the proper rain they need, that well will top those cisterns back off and you know all of the house is gonna get giant six inch gutters and then they're gonna have large rain chains coming down to large catchment basins that the catchment basins are gonna feed over to those cisterns. So really cool. This is gonna be completely filled with dirt after those cisterns come in. It's gonna gradually slope down over here to the property edge. There'll be a neat meandering path kind of coming up into this area, give you another access point, you know, mixed in gardens and vignettes throughout the landscape this is right here where that you know natural swimming pool is going to be all of those cabbage palms are coming out the placement of them is really bad and this is the cabana off the back of the house which is really cool gonna have a screened in area on the top and the bottom kind of an area to get up away from the house kind of look at the sunset without getting tore up out here Although being right on the water like this, I have not you know, noticed a lot of bug pressure. So, you know, right here, that's where that greenhouse is gonna go. Gothic greenhouse, glass, small little greenhouse. There's that tunnel that goes into that potting area. So coming out to the greenhouse, coming over here to the gardens, coming over there to the gardens. We'll also have more gardens around this side of the house. Our best sun on the whole property, you know, seemed to be right here for the greenhouse kind of limited on options for that without bringing it up high and you know making it seen from that upper story so the same thing over here they might even put another cistern in here if they can't fit all on the other side this is getting filled with dirt gradually coming down landscape edibles natives ground covers etc um, salt tolerant species down here by the water obviously salt tolerant grasses I mean they just had a tropical storm from Irma you know 50 mile an hour winds here Y'all see all this garbage, I mean, Irma brought that in. I believe this, this house is rated for category five storms. The windows are all impact, I mean, it's, it's pretty beefy. I don't think this thing's going anywhere if we do get that hurricane. Um, but you know, 50 mile an hour winds might bring that trash up into the yard, 100 mile an hour winds might put that trash in the greenhouse, I mean, who knows? So they might set that up a couple of feet in the air, but we're just limited on space to put it with lighting. So, so. I must say, I love my job. I mean, the, the opportunities I get that come across all the time. I mean, some of the stuff I even have to turn down, uh, it's getting to be a little overwhelming. So 
hopefully one day we'll grow this team and be able to take on all these projects. But until then, I'm only gonna take what I can handle. So, Smart Home Pensacola, gonna be a really exciting project. I'm excited to get going on this one. And honestly, I just can't wait to see some of this cool technology they've implemented, you know, in use, you know, to come over here and wash my hands in the sink and, you know, flush the toilet with that water is kind of, and not even kind of, that's awesome. Hope you all enjoyed this quick little project video. I'm gonna be taking you to some other really awesome sites while I'm up here in the area. Um, hold tight, this is gonna be a fun trip. So don't forget, like, subscribe, and share. You guys have been doing some sharing that's really helping me. I appreciate it. Most important, pound it.